Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Renderman 23 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at Pixar Rounded Cube, also known as Triplanar Projection. So basically this is a method of projecting textures onto an un-UV'd mesh uh, based on their world direction or vector. So um, say for example, your Y would be your green color, your X would be your uh, red color and your Z would be a blue color if projected onto this mesh just based on the colors of its orientation and I can show that a little bit better um, than me explaining it if I just assign a Pixar surface to this cube and we jump into the hyper shade here and I'll just map that out and we'll add in a Pixar round cube which is a bit of an unusual name but it works uh, so we'll just plug the result mask into the diffuse color and then if we run an IPR, you'll see the cube here has got a blue for the Z direction. If you can see down here in the bottom corner, we've got our um, axes. So Z is blue, red is X, and Y is green. And you might be familiar if you've seen this logo before with triplanar projection. Uh, they used a similar method uh, creating this logo. This orientation isn't correct for the actual colors. Um, I think if I rotate the camera, we'd maybe get there. Actually, the green is on the wrong side, but we could actually fix that. If we go into the round cube, we've got a bunch of options here. The first thing you'll see, we'll get into a couple of these manifolds and things um, in a second when I, once I create a more complex texture using a more complex mesh, but we could actually have a look at randomize to begin with. So if we just set it to object name and random orientation, you'll see that we get a random orientation uh, of our colors. So if we set that to 10 for example and then um, set it to object ID starting to get a closer representation of what the original logo is. Red is facing up on that logo. I think there's yellow caps actually so it's actually got um, Y positive and negative uh, planar projection which is something that we can do. So why to show you that um, I'm going to bring in a couple of different textures and assign them individually to each plane. So to do that we'll use a, a PX, PXR multi texture and we'll run the result multi into this top input and just select manifold multi and then run the result RGB into diffuse color and now we can start looking at some of these more more of these options in the PXR round cube. I've got a Pixar multi-texture tutorial from a while back if you're interested more in this node but um, I will just cover this for the moment mainly in this tutorial. So what we'll do is at the moment we've got the Pixar round cube set to one texture and I'm just gonna remo remove the uh, random orientation for this. So we're gonna project a, a texture onto this cuboid object by opening a texture file here. So I'll grab this 70s wallpaper. All right, so to make this simpler, we'll go back to our cube for the moment. And you can see that I've um, loaded that texture in and rendered it. So we've got this um, 70s wallpaper being assigned to each side, and this is without UVs. We can actually make some adjustments to the wallpaper. So the first thing will be just the general or the universal frequency. So if we increase the frequency, you can see we get more of that pattern being repeated. Um, transmission width won't show very well here because our object has got 90 degree corners only. But if you have a smoother object, you'll see a bit more of this. And I will show you a little bit later in the tutorial how that looks. We can randomize the orientation. So this each side will have a random orientation and you can randomly flip it um, on the S and T directions of your uh, texture as well. And you can also randomize the offset, so it will be slightly to the left or the right on each um, plane. I'll remove those randomizations though for now. So you can enable and disable certain axes. So I've got the X disabled now, we can re-enable it, and then we can scale it individually to the other axes. So now it's much larger on the S and much larger on the T. And then you've got your individual offsets per um, S and T axes for your texture. You can also invert them and um, invert them on the T as well. So I could set that to be up the right way. And then I could also go down to the, what axis is that? The Z axis and do the same. So now that's facing up the same way as the other side. So all those axes have the same uh, options. I'm not gonna go too far into this, but something else to notice is that you can 
you, you've got inputs for these parameters as well, which we could affect with a noise generator, for example. So we'll just use a PXR fractal and we'll run the result F say into the frequency. And then we will just adjust the frequency. So what you can see, and it's not a great example because of the type of texture, but because of the fractal is, um, is randomly has got random values between zero and one you'll get more frequency in certain areas than others it's going to be kind of difficult to actually see the fractal here but um, you can see that you could use this to get random noise results you could also instead of using it in the frequency you could plug it into say the um, offset or scale on say just the x um, S and say the X T as well. So it's just going to affect the orientation. Uh, so the scale of the X in its S and T directions. So you can see you can get some fairly interesting patterns occurring like that. So going back to our default position, if we go back up to our round cube and back up to the top, you'll see we've got a couple of other another option here um, using however many textures we want. So we've got one texture at the moment. If we select three, we can actually assign two more textures to the other two axes. So I'll just grab a texture here. Okay, so you can see you can just assign random textures like I have here to each side. So I've got a brick on the top or on the on the Y and uh, on the Z I've got this clay. And you'll see that the clay goes through to the other side. So it's on the negative Z and the uh, positive Z and same for the Y, it's on the negative Y and the positive Y. And then the X is on the negative and positive X. Um, now the final one you can do is six textures, which will, I'm not gonna go through that because it's fairly self-explanatory at this point. But for example, you will have your um, X, which we've already looked at. So we've got our X texture on the positive and negative. This would just make it so you could have a different texture on the positive X and then on the opposite side on the negative X, you could have a different texture again. Now, this is all to say that this is actually quite a useful tool if you don't want a UV say you've got a texture running from a floor to a ceiling but you don't want to do your uvs you'll have to change all your orientations of all your planes this is a really good way to set the orientations within the um, shader itself rather than having to run into the uv editor and it's also really good for procedurals if you've got a slightly more complex mesh that you don't want a uv but you just want a procedural texture on it's not going to be under close scrutiny so you can actually use some noise uh, with this method uh, to get a pretty good result and I'll show you here with a more complex mesh okay so you can see now I've got this mesh here which is a really old model of mine um, if you've been watching the channel you'll remember them from a long long time ago and we can use this method to assign textures to him um, I don't believe he's got UVs on this particular one it shouldn't because it's about a million polys I believe yeah one million polys so I haven't UV'd this one this isn't the base model obviously this is the displacement or the normal so we'll assign our texture to this okay so you can see that he's rendering up now and we've still got the same textures assigned to him so his what was it the uh, z is the wallpaper and the y is the brick and then the x is the clay and we could go through and make some further adjustments now to make this sort of a little bit more interesting so now that we've got these three textures we can adjust their scales individually per axes and we can actually blend them a bit better now because we've got um, smoother transitions instead of those 90 degree corners so for example if we can go to the global transition width we can make it a sharper transition so there'll be a tighter fall off between the two or we can give it a 1.0 transition you'll see it's much smoother now and the textures blend together so you can see how if i zoom out a bit there this looks a lot more natural but we do have these planar transitions so for organic shapes this can actually be really powerful now you don't have to use three textures or six textures with this we could just go back to our wallpaper for example and then we could say that on the y-axis the scale is 0.2 so on the top of his head now we get a lot more repetition but on the sides and on the front we don't get as much so really good for creating things like if you've got a rusted top and you can transition that down into a um, painted surface on the other side if you're using like a you know a rounded uh, sort of mesh uh, or otherwise you could use it for a bunch of different organic shapes really good for making rocks uh, really good for making uh, muddy surfaces you can combine this with displacements as well so if we went back in and we just go back to three textures 
we could run a PXR bump to start with and we'll just run the result RGBR into the input bump and the result N into the bump normal run that IPR so now we're getting a little bit more bumping happening um, probably too much we'll probably set that to 0.1 make it a bit more realistic and we'll set in a singular light so you can see very quickly we've got an interesting surface texture obviously probably not what you could want your monster to look like but you can see how this can be useful now the only other thing to reference or to note here would be if I was actually using a base mesh with a displacement map I could use I could affect the manifold based on its current position uh, or its undisplaced position so generally you'd want to use its um, displaced position if you're applying the, the texture and bump mapping for example onto a displaced mesh um, if I was using the actual base mesh here with a displacement map on it the I'd want to assign the texture based on the displacement map so it was more accurate placement um, but generally I probably wouldn't use this for something so complex this is really good for just um, a little bit of quick look dev or background noise uh, in objects that aren't going to see a lot of scrutiny like I said earlier so hopefully that's been useful for you guys I will be using this node a little bit more in future tutorials where we'll be doing more procedural texturing and shading so look out for those in the future that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below